my game mm -hmm. away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do it, fellas. Let's do it, fellas. Cashing in, say the way Liv did. Well, that's like that's like winning the lottery, isn't it? And I don't need to win the lottery because I work my ass off every week for a paycheck. You ready to make history? Come on now. Yeah. You know, there's, there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps because they, they know. They know what happens next. So without further ado. Free smoke. <laughs> Look. Scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bad talks I put in headphones on my driver Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and good diver I can't lie, I'm uninspired No more pillow talking about nonsense I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga That's what we do, no foundation We don't build no more, we just screw Half a bottle of Henny, girl, I'm going with the wind The same nigga say they happy for me Ain't want me to win, so I'm done on my friends Don't need help popping Coronas and reminiscing, I just call up Big Bro J And say it's time for venting If I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries You don't know how much I have you doing what it meant to me But motherfuck all that I don't even know what the time to make the call back Stupid low though If they don't get the picture now, man, I crop them out of the photo I can't relate to my peers Been doing this shit for years I'm motivated by fears I took the wheel and I steered My sound not dictated by fuckboys in Atlanta Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss Forever like they decided to throw me under slammer Every song's a hit like they pitching me underhand as I could drop a million songs, but they never gon' understand this Soapbox sermons for niggas never giving chances Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances Work twice as hard for the shit that they getting handed And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga, we branded Still can't tell why y'all of these niggas mad at me I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary Give it all to the art, man, I turn my life to a gallery uh, Man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece 1100 shots and I swear, man, I felt them all If we ain't even good on our block, man, who can we call? pre decline state of mind, we broke crabs in the barrel Got us fighting our folk, man, this shit just a life of peril I know you got him picked, but the man's in trouble I'm gonna show you how great I am Yeah, yo, listen to me, bro I had to cut that yo short and hit it with a different yo Because I just... I was before I hopped on this bad boy, I was listening to Adele when we were young, bro. What a what a masterful song, bro. What a just what an unbelievable song, sis. Ah. Haha. -ha. I cannot. Yo, me and my homie be in the truck. And every time he say something funny or he say something, I, it, it's a certain type of thing he gotta say, and I'll be like, haha. -ha. Who say that, bro? Where did I hear that sound from? I don't even know how you type that into Google or into YouTube, bro. But I don't know what cartoon or where I heard that shit from. Where the dude, I'm, I think it's SpongeBob. And I don't watch SpongeBob, so that's why I don't know for a fact that that's why I saw that clip. And I'm looking at an orange fish in my head. It's like, ha ha. But <laughs> I do not know. Anyways, how is everybody doing today? It's hot, bro. I was at work earlier and the sun wasn't even out. And it was as hot as it, it felt like it was like 100 degrees, bro. And it was not, the sun wasn't even out. You, you go outside sometimes and the sun is out and you smell like something burning. Just know we out here cooking. We out here cooking, bro. It's going to come a day where I truly believe it's going to get too hot for human beings to even go outside. Like, it's just going to be too hot. <clears throat> Like, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about where, you know, some people, you know, they get, I'm talking about it's going to be a day where j worldwide, it's like, stay in your house and run the ACs, bro. Like, you will not survive if you go outside for longer than, what, two minutes or something. I feel like that's coming. So we got to get it together. I think that's what global warming and all that stuff they be talking about. We got to get it together. I don't know what I'm talking about. So we move on. Listen, we got a lot to talk about today. We got a lot to talk. We got a good, we got a good show for you, folks. Who be saying that? 
where I'm hearing a lot of people in my head and I can't. Let me photograph you in this light in case it is the last time that we might be exactly like we were before we realized we were sad of getting old and made us restless. It was just like a movie. It was just like a song. And then they hit that shit. When we were young. Actually, they go a little bit high. They were like, when we were young. I can't get that high. Well, I can, but I can't get that high right now. This shit's hard, bro. This shit's hard, bro. But listen, we got a good show for you today, folks. Ah, ha, ha. Listen, I want to talk about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. So I heard about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets doing the, um, you know, um, what, what, what do you call the show? Hard Knocks. And I see a lot of, uh, well, specifically Colin Cowherd, uh, talk about how, you know, don't like hard knocks, hard knocks, uh, don't like, you know, it's, it's a distraction and blase, blase. Would he believe that if it were a team that did not have Aaron Rodgers? You, you know, I really don't know what to think of Colin sometimes, bro. His, his opinions and his analysis is so all over the place at times, but nonetheless, I am interested in the Jets because I've watched a lot of Jets talk this year and I have not talked too much about the Jets since or at all since they signed Aaron Rodgers. Um, but I am interested and, and I've, I've watched shows talking about the expectations of the New York Jets this year and what are the expectations. The first thing I want to say is I do not like it when analysts get on TV and say expectations to expectations for the Jets or Aaron Rodgers should be tied to past failures by the Jets. Bro, I could give two fucks if the Jets ain't made it to the playoffs in 10 years. If Aaron Rodgers, no, if Pat Mahomes signed with the Jets tomorrow, the expectation would not be to just make the playoffs. It would not be to just win a playoff game. It would be to make it to the Super Bowl and win it. So just because a team got a bad history, it does not matter. That is not what you base everything on. Aaron Rodgers is a, a first ballot Hall of Fame. The expectation for Aaron Rodgers throughout his career, at least after he won that Super Bowl, and since he was winning MVPs, is a Super Bowl championship. So just because Aaron Rodgers comes over in a, to a Jets team that ain't made the playoffs and God knows how, does not subtract from the expectation. It does not lessen the expectations. The expectations for Aaron Rodgers and the Jets is to make it to a Super Bowl. I could give two fucks how hard the AFC is. I acknowledge that. But the expectation for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens is a Super Bowl. The expectations for uh, Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid and, uh, with, and uh, Travis Kelsey is a Super Bowl. The expectations for the Dolphins is a Super Bowl. The expectations for the Patriots is a Super Bowl. The Bills, the Bengals, the Browns, it is the Chargers, it is a ple the Jags, it is a plethora of teams in the AFC who have the exact same expectations, and some of those teams don't even have nearly the talent that Aaron Rodgers have over there with the Jets. And you hold Aaron Rodgers to a higher standard, or you rate him higher than you rate other quarterbacks. I saw a list today. Lamar Jackson is not the seventh best quarterback in the AFC. He is a top three quarterback in the AFC, in the AFC. And it's very funny to me that for white quarterbacks, you can lean on expectation. But for black quarterbacks, it's what have you done? Because what has Justin Herbert done? Oh, nothing. But, you know, we expect that Justin Herbert is, you know, this. So we're going to put him higher than Lamar. A unanimous MVP winner. Oh, well, you know, that was luck. What? It's only two of those that exist. There's no such thing as luck in a game where you can be so prepared. So, I did, you know, with the expectations of most top-tier quarterbacks, with the exception of when people want to give their favorite white quarterbacks a pass, it's Super Bowl a bus for most of these teams. <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers going to the Jets is not going to lessen that. This is a Super Bowl roster in a lot of people's opinions. All I kept hearing last year, even I said it, the Jets need a quarterback. They are a quarterback away from being a Super Bowl contending team. They supposedly have that quarterback now. Not to mention, Aaron Rodgers was rated higher than a lot of good quarterbacks after the season he just had. So now, 
uh, further proof that I just gave you Justin Herbert. So Lamar Jackson struggle and you judge him off of that. Aaron Rodgers struggling. And say, oh, you know, he just had a down year, you know. OK, that's interesting. <clears throat> Nonetheless. The Aaron Rodgers that played last year in Green Bay. That's not good enough to get a playoff spot in the AFC. Now, I know a lot of people want to point to Green Bay and say, oh, that was just a bad team. That's inaccurate. This was a team that chose not to switch up the way they played when Devontae Adams left. A lot of that had to do with Aaron Rodgers not wanting to become a, to become a run first, second, and third type of team. He wanted to still throw the ball to receivers he did not trust, nor did he want, it felt like. And his favorite receiver of the whole bunch was nowhere near as talented as the best receiver on the team, who also, in my opinion, is not a number one receiver in Christian Watkins. Watkinson's or well, I don't want to say whatever his name is because that sounds disrespectful, but I can't uh, remember exactly what his last name is. You know who I'm talking about, though. And so you look at how they played down the stretch and what got them back into the hunt to make the playoffs. Defense and running the ball. Aaron Rodgers just doing the bare minimum. And that's no indictment on Aaron Rodgers. We know how great Aaron Rodgers has been throughout his whole career, but this is just what the game is right now. This is how what we have to do to win. Aaron Rodgers was vocal about him not wanting to win like that. He wanted to go out on his sword. In doing so, your team put you in a position to do just that against the Detroit Lions, and he couldn't come through. Now, you can use the excuse of, oh, it was a down year. Oh, he didn't have weapons. Oh, he didn't like his weapons. But you don't have that excuse this year. Because the Jets have weapons. The Jets have pieces. The Jets have a good team. I don't know if the Jets is a great coach team. But Aaron Rodgers should be able to make up for that. Because we see a lot of great quarterbacks not have great coaches. And they make up for that. Everybody not going to be able to be Pat Mahomes with Andy Reid. That's just not how it's going to work. Usually, your great quarterback turn your head coach into a great coach in some instances. And you got instances where you got a great head coach already in place. Lamar going to a John Harbaugh, already a great head coach in place. But it's not always like that. And so that's no excuse. Aaron Rodgers has to be a... Now listen, am I going to shit on them if they get to the playoffs and win a playoff game and then lose a contested, a close game? No, I'm not. However, the expectation did not change. Like I said, Giannis, you, you hear it all the time. There's no such thing as failures in sports. So I'm not going to call it a failure because you continuously try this. However, this is a little bit different because you are on failure type of timing with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is not going to be with the Jets for the next six, seven, eight years. You can absolutely fail in this mission right here. Now, this is completely different from Giannis. Now, if Giannis plan on being with Milwaukee for a short amount of time, then, yes, yeah, sure, we can start turning things into failures, even though he still won a ring with them. So I don't know how you can consider his time in Milwaukee a failure. Aaron Rodgers did not fail in Green Bay. Did he win less than we would have liked him to? Absolutely. But he got to a Super Bowl and won that ultimately. So that was a success. He can absolutely fail in Green Bay. I mean, in New York, if he does not get them to a chance. And I'm so interested to see Aaron Rodgers with this media. Because the New York media got to be some of the most... I, I don't even hate the New York media. I hate the New York fans. And maybe the media... Uh, the media got a lot to do with how fans act also, but I'm not going to give you complete power over fans. Fans still are ignorant in them in their own right. So let's say Aaron Rodgers go out there and have a tough game, a tough season. Who to say the fans won't boo him? They boo Aaron Judge. <clears throat> so I am very interested to see how he deal with that. And because Aaron Rodgers is a vocal person, I can see him and the uh, fans going back and forth at it the entire season, like having a contentious relationship. However, the Jets is on the clock. You, know, you probably only have Aaron Rodgers for, what, two years? If that, they got to win a Super Bowl. This is a Super Bowl team. You done signed a lot of dudes that Aaron Rodgers wanted you to sign. Your defense already in place. You paying a lot of guys. Just played, paid Quentin Williams. Shout out to him. You got to go get a Super Bowl. This is as good a roster as any other, the other and as any of the other contending rosters in the uh, AFC. Or in the NFL, for that matter. So you got to go get it. Like I said, everybody kept yelling about last year. Oh, this team is a quarterback away, a quarterback away. So Aaron Rodgers got to go get it. Now, and I understand the competition that's 
at place in the AFC. I understand Aaron Rodgers' age. But Aaron Rodgers wasn't released. The Jets went out and traded for Aaron Rodgers. That's telling me they wanted him. They believed that he was the missing piece to get them to where they needed to go. So you got to get it done. It's, it's no, it's, this, this can't be one of those situations where it's, oh, well, you know, he got to the playoffs. So, you know, that's good. God forbid he missed the playoffs. But, you know, and that, that is a real possibility in the AFC. It is no guarantee that Aaron Rodgers and the Jets will make the playoffs. I don't think they'll make the playoffs right now. I just got to see it. Because to me, Aaron Rodgers ain't enough right now. Aaron Rodgers from two, three years ago, maybe. The Aaron Rodgers I just saw last year, combined with the age and the competition in the AFC and teams already knowing each other, I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't think the Jets are better than the Bengals. I don't think the Jets are better than the uh, Chiefs or the Ravens or the Bills. But I think it's teams that they can have, that they can beat, and I think they are in the best possible division, even though I understand people. Well, they're not, because if you was in the Titan division with the Titans, the Jags, the Colts, that's actually the best division to be in. But <clears throat> the Patriots are not an offensive team, bro. They, they just aren't. Yet again, they get Mac Jones nothing to work with on offense. I don't like his receiving core. I'm not a fan of it at all. I understand. Uh, sh roll, shout out to the running back, Harris. Roll Tide. But I'm he ain't enough. I'm not a fan of what they did with the offensive coordinator position last year. I'm really not a fan of Bill O'Brien. So bringing him back as, yes, he is a real offensive coordinator, but whatever. Like, I think Mac Jones at every single step of the way has been set up to fail. And if even if you don't want to say he's been set up to fail, he has not been propped up to succeed. He's not been set up to succeed. He in no way have the Patriots done anything to help Mac Jones, in my opinion. Now, you can say, well, they went out and did a whole bunch of signings that one offseason. Did they do those signings because of the lack of talent, or did they do those signings because they made sense? Because it's one thing to just sign a bunch of talent because you feel like you ain't got none. It's another thing to sign talent that you actually think fit with the team that will actually help Mac Jones. And so, I'm just... I, that should be a team that you beat twice this year. The Jets should finally get two wins over the Patriots. The Bills is a different situation. I understand a lot of people want to shit on the Bills right now and down Josh Allen and all this type of things. But once again, this is not an easy conference. I know Tom Brady got people thinking that every single year the best uh, quarterback or, or the quarterback that pre people project to win the MVP is supposed to uh, make it to the Super Bowl. But that ain't that's not how it works. The Bengals are a great team. The Ravens are a great team. The Chiefs are a great team. Sometimes it's just about matchups. The Bengals almost lost to the Ravens. Then they go out there and smack the Bills. That's just how it goes, bro. It's matchup-based football. The Ravens play the Bengals twice a year. They would know how to adjust at this time to playing them. They also got a better secondary than the Bills have. Now the Bills also have a great secondary, but they had injuries this year with the secondary position. Tredavious White is still not back to being Tredavious White. Micah Hyde did not play last year because of an injury. So if having those guys, having those guys would have done a great, it would have helped, but I don't think they would have won because matchups. A lot of people see how great the Bengals offense is, and it's a great offense. That you overlook how great the defense is also. Now, they have lost some pieces to that defense this offseason. Not enough to where, <gasps> excuse me, not enough to where I think the defense will be bad. But that's a good defense. And when you have a Bills team that's sole operation is getting the ball to Stephon Diggs, you got to understand they're going to know how to stop that. And they're going to know if it's a game of who can score the most. You ain't outscoring us when we got through a three-headed monster over here and a good quarterback. Y'all got a good quarterback and one animal. And yeah, Gabe Davis have a lot of good games in the playoffs, but we feel we can defend him better than y'all can defend our three monsters. And that's just how it goes. That don't make the Bills any less of a contender, any less of a good team. That should tell them that they not they have holes that they need to fill. And so, and listen, sometimes you don't have to fill that receiver hole. Sometimes you just got a quarterback and coaching. Pat Mahomes. And uh, Andy Reid was able to figure out how to get uh, beat the Bengals. That's just how it go. Sean McVay. Sometimes you just need an Aaron Donald to be able to shut shit down. So 
it's going to be it's going to be very interesting when it when you look at this division that the Jets is in because the Bills are a great team. They should have they should be better than the Patriots, just straight up. And then you got the Dolphins, and that's an interesting one because if Tua is healthy, the Dolphins is going to be a great team to me. You get Jalen Ramsey. You still got Tyreek Hill. If you know me, you know I think Tyreek Hill is a, uh, a top two receiver in the NFL. It probably three now because, uh, and when I say top two, I'm not talking about like one, two. I'm talking about it's top receivers in a group. Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill. Them is the three best receivers in the NFL to me, and I think I'm forgetting one right now. But I know for a fact I ain't forgetting either one of them three. None of those three. That's how great Tyreek Hill is. You got Jalen Waddle. You got Raheem Mostert, I believe, still in the backfield. I can't even remember who the running back is for the Dolphins at the moment because they run such a – they run multiple running backs. But <clears throat> I like the Dolphins. And if Tua can stay – now, I'm not I, – I don't really know how to feel about the Tua thing. I mean, three concussions in a season – you know, you got to worry that any time he get tackled, he can be concussed. So I'm not really sure how I feel about the Dolphins. That's the only thing holding me back from really leaning heavily into the Dolphins is the Tua injury. Because it would be one thing, like, it's starting to feel like he got the concussion problems that Luke Keekley had. And that's a shame because Luke Keekley, one of the greatest middle linebackers, Luke Keekley, one of the greatest defenders I ever had a pleasure of watching. And his career was shut court. His, I don't know what the hell I just said. His career was cut short because of concussions he had to retire early because of concussions and so it it, it feel like that's the road we traveling down right now with Tua I hope not um because if Tua can stay healthy I do think the Dolphins are a great team however I don't think Tua is a good enough uh quarterback in his own right meaning he can make the plays by himself without other people around him being great to overcome some of the talented quarterbacks in the AFC. And that's no knock on Tua. It's just levels to this. And he's not better than a Lamar Jackson, a Pat Mahomes, a Joe Burrow, a Josh Allen. He's just not. Aaron Rodgers, I don't even think he's better than And while I think he's a great quarterback, it's just levels to it. And so the concussion problem on top of the fact that if a game get tight and I just need a quarterback to be great, and I ain't saying that he can't do it. I'm just saying I don't trust him as much as I trust some of the other guys who to do it. And so, like I said, there's no knock on Tua, but it is levels to this. In every industry, in every sport, it is levels to this. So, in all honesty, the Jets, in my opinion, have a real chance of finishing in second or winning the division. It should be a two-man. It it will probably be a three-team race, but it really should be a two-team race late into the season between them and the Bills, in my opinion. But don't sleep on the Dolphins because I like the Dolphins' defensive additions. Let's see if they can put it all together. Um... And if Tua stay healthy, it's a dangerous team, bro. It just is what it is. But I'm very, but the expectation to me, in my opinion, remains the same. It's Super Bowl or bust. You can't have an expectation for the Ravens, for uh, Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs, for uh, the Bills and, and the Bengals and all these other talented teams. You cannot have the expectation that those teams should be a Super Bowl team or bust. But the Jets shouldn't just because they hadn't made the playoffs in a long time, but they got Aaron Rodgers, who should be having, who should uh, also be tasked with that type of expectation. So, in my opinion, when we ask what should the, I don't want, I don't care if they the top offense or the top defense, they better make it to the playoffs. That's a, that's for sure. But the expectation is Super Bowl. Now, am I saying it's a failure if they don't get to a Super Bowl and win it? Yeah. Not necessarily this year, but in Aaron Rodgers' time frame, it is a clock on this. The man, what, 38, 39? Come on. Let's, let's, not, be, let's not be ridiculous. It, it, there is a time on this. So I am very interested to see what you guys think, the expectation, or what should the expectation be for Aaron Rodgers and the Jets this year. I think it's Super Bowl or bust like it is for every great team and quarterback in the AFC and in the NFC is you don't leave the NFC to me, go to a better, t- uh, more talented roster, and the expectation just all of a sudden change. What? That's crazy. But with that being said, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking Up With Saints. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Tell somebody you love them. You could be anything in the world. Choose to be kind to somebody today. Like, subscribe, share. Sign out. I got the moves like hot sauce. Little mama taking the top off. 
I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money, so I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She say she horny when she take a shot, so I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in her tummy. Scoop her up like I'm raking her something. You would think Shawty Red Track, the way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber. You out here chasing the bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> Tight. Tight.